Okay, I've got some more uh, Basher space-time antenna coil notes. Um, I wanted to cl uh, clarify something. Um, in the first video I made, um, I said that I was a quarter scale of the original plan. Um, the original uh, Basher coil measurements are a coil that is has a height of 19.56 inches with a diameter of 11.56 inches. Um, the tetrahedron that this fits in is three feet tall. Um, my replication has a height of nine inches and a diameter of um, 5.32 inches. Um, so um, I'm about half the size of the one that you're supposed to build. Uh, and this is the minimum size according to Basher before something will happen. So I'm actually smaller than than uh, this one. This this one's quite big though, um, difficult to make, it takes up a lot of space in your room. Um, well, so uh, 2.17 to 1 ratio here. Uh, the other thing is comparing the um, tetrahedron sizes. Um, the original size would be um, 3 feet tall, which and each side would measure 44 inches. Um, so if you took uh, an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper, four of those, and laid them down lengthwise, that that would give you a feel for how big forty-four inches is, and that's a large tetrahedron. Um, the one I made, uh, I, I, I the one I made last night was wrong. Uh, I fixed it since then. Uh, the dimensions are the height is about seventeen and one eighth inch, and each side is twenty-one inches and now the coil fits in there better. Um, the circuit that I gave that uh, that takes in an AC waveform and converts it to DC, um, I, I wanted to standardize on having a load here and then you can, when you put a voltmeter on here you could compute wattage very easily by um, doing V squared divided by R. So um, at first I was thinking a 10k load but now, now I've changed my mind I'm going to go to a 100k load so that I'm not as greedy for wattage here. Um, so we got to start simple, work our way up. Um, so I, I recommend 100K or even a mega ohm here. Uh, and uh, depending on what values of capacitors you have here, um, if you put capacitors that are too big, it might filter better, but take forever to charge up um, with a one mega ohm load. Um, so 100, 100 microfarads is a good good choice. Uh, what else? Um, so this had me connecting to ground, um, but in experimenting today I uh, have done something different. Uh, no longer grounding this and, uh, and because we're going to put this in the tetrahedron and we want the thing to oscillate without with with its own uh, reference and not not relative to ground so what you do is instead you ground uh, this DC side of the circuit and the AC power will flow through and it's try trying to seek its path to ground and when it finds a ground there much more current flows uh, and this charges much more rapidly so the uh, the antenna is floating up way above ground, and the AC voltage wants to find its, or the uh, the power wants to find its way down to ground this way. Some people think that uh, you know the plus minus nomenclature is sort of backwards, and that current actually flows from the ground up, um, and. Uh, in the old radio days, they actually would connect ground to the plus side. And you can actually do this with this circuit. You can put this ground on either side and you'll get pretty much the same results. Um, so it's just a, it's just a, whatever convention you want to follow. Um, putting a, an oscilloscope on here messes things up. Uh, the ground that I have on the oscilloscope is different from this ground and therefore the uh, voltage that I read here changes and gets worse and things like that. So m measuring is really tricky 
um, with this stuff. But this simple circuit with a voltmeter is, is a good way to go because um, you can sort of compute wattage. Uh, you won't be able to look at waveforms with a scope as easily though. And one last thing, uh, so I've got this tetrahedron um, and I put the coil inside it. The top of the coil I'm going to connect to the outer plate. So, uh, so I'm going to put foil inside and outside. Um, that creates a capacitor and that's very much like the Ark of the Covenant kind of concept. Um, and I, I, I played around with only foil on the outside and as an experiment I slid in a piece of foil under the coil to see if the voltages would change and they improved so that, so that, I'm, that was kind of an aha moment that oh I need to put foil inside as well create a capacitor. Now the, um, the foam board that I built this out of is thick and yes, there's a lot of surface area here, but the distance between plates is wide. So you could you could do the math and try to calculate what that capacitance is, uh, but that would be very hard to get right. Um, I have a capacitance meter. I put it on there, and it was 360 picofarads, um, which is nice because that's uh, sort of the radio capacitance that you want um, with this thing. Um, similar to that variable capacitor I was adding. Um, then I experimented with hooking up the capacitor, uh, which is the tetrahedron as a capacitor, uh, both in series and in parallel with the coil. And I found that by p connecting them in parallel, I got the largest gain. Um, so as a tank circuit, uh, but you know, as a tank circuit, um, you know the capacitor fills up, draining down the coil, and then and then and then it pushes back into the coil. Coil charges up, capacitor drains down, and so the voltages oscillate back and forth. And any incoming uh, voltage, uh, you know, raises the the sine wave up up to it up to the amplitude that it can sustain. Um, and since I'm going to have foil all the way around this thing, even the bottom. Uh, this needs to be suspended above the ground with a good insulating material, so I was just I'm going to just use some glass jars. And so now we have uh, an interesting device here. It's got a capacitor on the outside, which provides not only that capacitance, but it also provides shielding so that the coil inside is shielded from the from the radiation that's coming in. So the coil uh, has as input the outer surface and uh, the other side will be connected to the inner surface. Now the inner surface being, being in, inside uh, is an environment that's uh, shielded and so that creates a current flow. And then, and then because it's an RC, LRC circuit, it will ring. And I think that's the goal. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm going to put a... Uh, uh, so, because I, I've got this thing inside my house, I haven't brought it outside yet, um, and the house is attenuating all the incoming radiation, um, it's still not very uh, exciting in terms of how, how, how much uh, power it's producing. It's only producing uh, in the picowatt to nanowatt range. But if you turn on a plasma ball, I can get up into the one milliwatt to five milliwatt range, especially if you touch the plasma ball right against it. Um, and th that's just having something like that that transmits uh, these coherent fields provides a way to sort of uh, experiment and see uh, which combinate, you know, which way to hook things up to see which which uh, which results in a higher amount of output. So you do need some some sort of transmitting source, just as a uh, as a way to make the current flow, so that you can study study this.